Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highland Subnet Signature event. Checking in, 29712C is Cognitor. We just had a great last match that they played here so far. I really love that their flat mech that they have on that, that they're using both for scoring in both height goals and also in terms of color sorting as well too. But a lot of great stuff that's gone into the overall construction of this robot that we'll go into, including some improvements they made from their last event. I'll also be talking about uh, some stuff of their CAD work as well too. And uh, they actually, uh, one of the students on this wrote a book that I definitely recommend you check out as well too. So a lot of great stuff to learn about Cognitor coming up here on Pits and Parks. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. We match let's dive right into this robot here. We got to talk about this ramp mech you were mentioning to me earlier. So talking about some of the features and capabilities of yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So. Essentially, this ramp mech is powered by a piston, as you can see uh, right here. And what the main function of this is, uh, it can go down here, so it can score on the middle goal, and it can also act as like a D-score mechanism. So we can just use our drivetrain and push the ramp flap, uh, ramp flap mechanism back onto the middle goal, and so uh, opponent blocks will be D-scored. And also, we can elevate it like this, and it acts uh, as a way to score on the long goal. So it essentially provides us a dual threat while also possessing offensive and defensive capabilities. During a match, yeah. uh, from a strategy standpoint, yeah. what's kind of your typical plan of attack initially? Are you going for the high goals first or yeah. the mid goals? How's that work? Yeah, for sure. So after Auton, so uh, our main focus is going to the match load mechanism. And then after that, we uh, we make sure to get blocks and then we go immediately to the long goal because in this game, pushback, it's a very offensive minded game. So we want to prioritize scoring and our robot is also built heavily for scoring which makes it all the better. And then after that, uh, we also prioritize using control bonus. And then at the end, we focus middle goal so we can get the control bonus there and then we uh, go park. You mentioned D-scoring. Let's talk a little bit more about D-scoring. Pass over to Arnav, talk about the uh, wing that you have as well too. Your last match you played absolutely came in clutch, uh, able to uh, push some of the blocks over to win that match and that high goal. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so the wing mechanism is one of our um, de-scoring mechanisms. It essentially goes in the long goals and is able to push blocks either into control bonuses or out of the goal. And this allows us to maintain control um, and have an advantage in the game. And you made some improvements to this as well too from your uh, last one as well. So can we hear a little bit more about what improvements got made? Yeah, so Amay's going to talk more about the improvements. Okay, so the improvements with the wing de-score um, or that, um, that we have this hole here, um, which changed the angle after our first competition at Dublin. And, uh, ever since then, um, our, this, this standoff has not gotten into the control, uh, bonus, uh, center of the long goal. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about some of the programming that goes in this robot as well, too. What are some aspects you want to highlight? Okay, so we have odometry um, and we have PID. So the benefits of odometry are that odometry is good for uh, short distances and is more has more speed to it. Um, PID is more accurate and is good for long distances. So we decided to combine them to produce the optimal result. Ayush, man, when we were talking earlier, uh, you mentioned that, you know, obviously a lot of times you're utilizing odometry, you have some drift issues. Many teams, you know, have this as well. How has your team been approaching a way to uh, compensate for any odometry drift? Yeah, so we use uh, what's called uh, mid-run relocalization. So what this uh, basically does is uh, we can have the robot run to like uh, a surface such as in like autonomous skills, we have the robot uh, align itself to the long goal after scoring. And after it does this, it recalibrates the sensors and resets the coordinates to um, like the, uh, the certain position so that it uh, removes the drifts uh, further in the run, making our autonomous more consistent. In addition to this, we also 
keep track of our logs, which uh, keeps track of the motor temperatures uh, and the voltages that the motors run every 100 milliseconds of during the skills run. So uh, we by uh, by analyzing the data, we can uh, take certain actions such as like cooling down our intake and drivetrain motors to ensure that we can get consistent runs for autonomous. And one of the other things uh, as well too that we'll bring up with the computer is uh, you cat it your robot. And I'm a huge fan of teams that take the time to actually cat it, put things together. Uh, first of all too, I noticed that your team is utilizing Onshade uh, for this too. So uh, talking about, are, are you catting this before you manufacture as an afterthought thing? Like how does CAD work for your team? Yeah, so we CAD this uh, before we uh, built our robot. And, as, and also, as you can see here, this is a CAD of our like first, very first iteration of our robot before we built it. And, and as you can see here, we have side rollers uh, here originally, and we can also we also use this as a way to uh, like pinpoint where we, how we want our blocks to travel through the ramp. Also, a thing in the like the building is that we had like a challenge where the block wouldn't uh, like. Uh, travel up the ramp because of this uh, big gap. So then like a minor change we made that helped a lot was adding uh, a bottom row of flexibles here to like um, improve the transition from the these front rollers, which we originally also changed uh, throughout the build uh, building process and also adding a plastic ramp here. I got to ask you about the book, uh, the It Worked Yesterday Mystery uh, that you published. So can you tell us a little bit more uh, about the book itself? And then also you have another publication uh, that's coming out as well, too, or has come out. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so first talking about the book, uh, this is this, I, I wrote this book uh, based on the experiences that I've encountered, especially during programming as competitions from my last four years of experience in robotics. And also, this not only does it have like programming tips and uh, challenges that uh, other teams might encounter programming, uh, this also has tips on like travel tips uh, for uh, how to uh, travel with your robot, uh, and also tips for uh, like uh, CAD designs and the building process. General tips like that. Where can somebody find this book, by the way, if they're interested in reading it? Yeah, so this book is available on Amazon. And let's wrap up talking talk about this uh, publication that you have here too. We have, uh, I have an article called, it's titled Zeroing In, The Power of PID in Next Gen Robotics. And this basically talks about like the applications of PID and the benefits. Um, and so I did like uh, my studies and also ran uh, 30, uh, 30 different trials with uh, one without PID, with like manual motor movements, and one with PID, uh, and this uh, like uh, shows all the factors like oscillations, like the error, and eventually, I mean, doing this, we proved uh, that like PID will help uh, helps like correct the error and help it uh, like gets more accurate with reaching its tar target positions. And we got this uh, reviewed by uh, the National High School Journal of Science, and it got accepted. So we're still uh, waiting on getting it published onto the. So, yeah. And is this something that somebody could uh, pick up and read as well too? Is there a place to download it? Yeah, it should, it's on the. It's in the National High School Journal of Science. Okay, so they can actually find it right on there. Yeah, Very cool. Fine. Well, overall, uh, Cognitor, thank you so much for telling us about uh, your robot. Congratulations on the publications as well, too. Great stuff for the community to enjoy. Once again, this is Cognitor, and wish you best of luck here at uh, Highlander uh, Summit Signature Event. Thanks thank a lot. You. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.
The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected.